should look in on him, please? Whether the learner likes it or not, we but must... he might be dead in there. What you're looking at is an advert for an experiment in 1961 to study memory. The pay, regardless of the outcome, was $4 per hour. So you decided to volunteer for the study. You're called in for the experiment and as soon as you arrive, you meet a fellow volunteer and the experimenter. Both you and the volunteer were asked to draw a piece of paper from a hand that would determine your role in the study. The volunteer was the first one asked to draw the paper and the paper read, Learner, and by default, you were automatically appointed as the teacher. Both you and the volunteer were brought to a room separated from one another by a wall. The learner was strapped onto an electric chair designed to send shocks and at the same time secure him in place. An electrode was attached to the learner's wrist and a paste was applied to avoid blisters and burns. And on the other side of the room is the shock generator. Although the shocks can be extremely painful, they cause no permanent tissue damage. The experimenter assures you and the learner. So you sit down on your desk, looking closer at the generator, there are over 30 levers, labeled 15 volts up to 450. Behind you is another table where the experimenter will be sitting to oversee the experiment. With all the preparations done, the experiment is ready to commence. You start by reading a series of word pairs such as red and hammer, cat and dog, to the learner who was instructed to memorize the pairings as you read them through. Once all the word pairings have been said aloud, you're instructed to read the word pair again, but now the second part of the pair is up to the learner to remember correctly. The quiz progressed perfectly at first, and then the learner makes his first mistake. The experimenter behind you told you to flip the first switch, which is the 15 volt shock. Ouch! The learner responded in pain, experiencing his first electroshock punishment. You continue again with the word pair and the learner makes another mistake but you're told to flick the second lever which is the 30 volts. As you continue again with the word pair, the learner makes another mistake and you notice that for each punishment, 15 volts were increased every single time. As the severity of the punishment increased, so too does the response from the learner. He begins to bang on the wall repeatedly and scream on top of his lungs, asking for mercy. Fear, guilt and dread start to overcome you and you feel a huge weight on your whole body, reluctant to flick a simple switch. You decided to bail the experiment, but the experimenter insists that you continue with the experiment. The more you beg for the experiment to stop, the more adamant the experimenter becomes. So, the question I have for you is, what would you do? Would you still continue with the experiment, or would you simply just leave? This experiment was actually conducted in July 1961 by Stanley Milgram in the basement at Yale University. Forty men had volunteered for the study and they all came from various backgrounds. The experiment was falsely advertised requiring three individuals with each different role but in reality, only one role was recruited which was the teacher. The volunteer who was banging on the wall begging for the study to stop was all an act. When the teacher sat down on his desk, the learner had connected a tape recorder to play for each shock administered. Ouch. Also, there was no shock involved in the study whatsoever. Any attempts from the teacher to halt the experiment, predetermined prods, a total of four of them, have been prepared to push the teacher into continuing the experiment. The actual objective of the study is to test out how much people are willing to listen to authority figures when told to do stuff that goes against their personal conscience. Only after the fourth prod or the maximum voltage has been administered will the experiment be over and the teacher is free to leave the study. Just three months before the study, one of the major organizers of the Holocaust, Otto Adolf Eichmann, was captured and was brought to Israel to stand trial on 15 criminal charges, including war crimes, crimes against humanity, and crimes against the Jewish people. During the trial, he did not deny the Holocaust or his role in organizing it, but he said, he was simply following orders. He was found guilty on all of the charges and was executed by hanging on 1st June 1962. His trial was huge at that time and because of what he said, Milgram wondered if Eichmann and his million accomplices in the Holocaust were really just following orders. Like Milgram and his colleagues and probably you watching this would think that only a small fraction of the participants would obey the experimenter until the end, but that is not the case. An overwhelming 65% of the participants actually administered the maximum voltage to the learners. Even the lowest voltage was 300 volts. Although they were all reluctant in obeying the authority, they still complied. The participants were seen sweating, trembling, stuttering, biting their lips, groaning, 
digging their fingernails into their skin, and some had nervous laughing fits and seizures. Because of how shocking the results of the study were, the study quickly gained popularity and instantly became a classic. At the same time, it had also garnered an infamous reputation because many have questioned the ethics of the study and how applicable the study is in real life. The most notable person that was quick in pointing out the ethics was Gina Perry. However, her argument was easily dismissed because after the study, a survey was given out to the participants after debriefing them. 84% of the former participants said they were glad or very glad to have participated and of the rest of the 15% chose neutral. Many later wrote letters to Milgram expressing thanks and they even repeatedly offered assistance and requests to join his staff. As far as the application of the study goes in real life, this is what Milgram has to say. I set up a simple experiment at Yale University to test how much pain an ordinary citizen would inflict on another person, simply because he was ordered to by an experimental scientist. Authority was pitted against the subject's moral compass, and in the end, with the subject's ears ringing with the screams of the victims, authority won more often than not. The study was even replicated time and time again, and was found to have very similar results. So to answer the question, would you continue with the experiment? You most probably would.